Cheers, guys. Alright guys, behind me is one of the coolest things I've ever made, this GL500 engine. So if you guys are unfamiliar with what this is, I recommend you go watch the two videos before this to get up to speed on this thing. And if you have seen those already, enjoy the video. Well as of now, I think I've got a loose plan on how to at least just get going on the stand. So I do want to incorporate a lot of this wood in the new display, but I do want to get this thing up on a sturdy metal base with some casters. So I think what I'm going to do is obviously tie into the lower rear motor mount here and I'll have a, a runner going straight down there along with this casting portion up front. We'll do that on both sides. And then um, kind of a, I'm picturing right now I can build it high enough and cut the boards with enough precision where I can kind of fit the boards under the engine just like it is now. Box in that whole frame section and then uh, we can kind of just dress it up from there. I do have other ideas in mind, but I think this would at least get us get us started on it. And to get going, I've just got uh, some four foot sections of one inch square along with a three quarter section, six foot of angle iron, we'll use that as a shelf. And I think overall the, the, the stand dimensions I'm going to do about 14 inches wide, kind of keep it a little bit more narrow, and then probably about 22 inches long, because I think visually that will, that will just look the best. Plus, we keep it under 24 inches, then, you know, that saves us material that we're wasting there. So, that's what I'm going to do. I think uh, I'll just start cutting this, making a squared off section, and we'll just go from there. No real exact plans, but that's we're just going to free flow it. I gotta say, I've never had such an extensive TIG project before. I have, there's each of these corners, let's see, that's uh, eight inches of weld, eight inches of TIG weld per corner, so eight times four. 
Yeah, that's a lot of welding just to do the other level, and then we have all these tubes. So I'm definitely uh, rapidly going through that bottle of argon on that thing, but we got it laid out. So this is the basic cart form, and this is our stand. We have room for our, uh, just anything we want to put down here. So as of now, I'm going to call it a day. Tomorrow, I'm going to come in, and I'll work on getting wood on this thing, getting that laid out. All right, now we have the stand relatively complete. We have it rolling. And at this time, I'm gonna start on the wood sides. Now I wanna repurpose as much of this as I can, but being that this is 40 year old wood, to say it's brittle is kind of an understatement. So I've been practicing on some pieces that I don't necessarily have to save. Kind of just disassembly, like how I can pry on it and what, what kind of what works, what doesn't. So as of now, I'm going to start on this piece I really want to save the part number, the GL500, you know, I want to save that. And I might have to keep these slats where they are, I don't know, because I do have a crack in the board right here. So we'll figure out how to do it, but I want to save this as a piece to go on the side, and then I have other wood that I'm going to put on top. So the engine's going to look like it's sitting on the crate with the exception of two little pieces, or the, uh, the metal mounting brackets kind of extending up through the wood but that's just going to be a cool detail. So I'm going to get to it, kind of, uh, I don't know, start prying and pushing nails out, saving the nails because I want to reuse those where possible. So just a good project for today. Let me show you what we have going on here in Missouri. It is uh, February 3rd, finally getting some snow. That's the start of an igloo I, tr I started on yesterday. It didn't really work out by myself. Got about a foot. Finally, finally a winter wonderland here. So if it's gonna be winter, if it's gonna be cold, I'm like, let there be snow, you know? I ain't mad about that. So as of now, I'm gonna get back to the boards. Uh, uh. making decent progress but I went ahead and decided just to kind of cut the ends on the back side of the board here because we're not going to see it anyway the issue um, we can pry these things out but what they do with these screws that they hand or the nails that they hammer in is they have a little curve on the end to make sure they won't back out on that crate so that's just kind of hindering prying the boards apart in a clean manner so you know again we're not going to see this so just went ahead took the cutoff wheel and just tried to cut off the end of all those nails so I'm going to flip this over. It should come apart a lot easier, a lot cleaner.
So for the color on that thing, I've decided to go with more of an aluminum and I just happen to have the correct color that kind of matches the engine cases. So just a, a duplicolor engine paint. Um, not that it needs high heat or anything like that, but I just happen to have the right color on hand. So I figure if it was black, which would be the easiest thing, if it was black, the little posts that, uh, that come up through the wood and actually bolt onto the engine, it might stand out a little bit more um, with maybe a little bit too much contrast. So I figure matching the color of the engine actually might help keep those hidden, so to speak, or have it look maybe more factory. I don't know, but just speculation at this point. I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to get paint this. We'll get the wood back on it and get the engine on this thing. It's going to start taking shape really quick. So I'm really excited about how this thing is turning out. Well, this thing is turning out awesome. It's exactly kind of what I was picturing. Now I probably will add maybe a little bit more detail on one side, specifically, uh, let's say around the corners. So putting some of the old slats right there, but this has the look I was after. So it's almost like the, the crate itself just shrunk down and on the ground. So like a little bit of gap there. And then I think we worked out well with the silver here or the aluminum color. And then I actually wood burned it just to add some age on some of the spots where I'd cut to make it look like it had never been cut by me or had been cut the whole time. So, and then one last detail in this little latch here. And that is our little cubby. So we don't know what's gonna go down here just yet, but it might be, might be some cool stuff. I don't know. It was almost a shame to hide this this frame though. This thing looks really good. Uh, once I had the top on it, it was like, oh boy, the contrast of that silver and then the wood was just beautiful. But this is still plenty cool. You know, this is uh, retaining the look of the original crate or the vibe. You know, I got the made in Japan, the the numbers on here and stuff. It's just it's a cool piece. And I specifically left the sides. There was evidence of like you know maybe like import tags or something on here. So I left evidence of that Same on this side. There was uh, something stapled here. We got the 65, just cool looking. Trying to retain all the details I can. So now I just have to figure out how to get the engine on this thing. Um, gonna have to call on a friend for sure because I definitely need to stop lifting these things by myself. So that I don't want to scratch anything because this thing is pristine. So hope you guys like this so far. All right, we got everything we need. Got a bolt. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let's get after it, I guess.
These ones are going to be like a little, little finicky to get in. So here it is. I'll, uh, yeah. It's in. When I welded it, moved a little on me. This thing looks really awesome on here. That was my buddy Nathan who came over, helped me lift this thing up here, get it placed so we didn't scratch it, but this thing looks really good. Next to it, I got a piece of glass. I just happened to have this piece of glass for, no kidding, at least like probably 10 years. I've just drug it around. I never had a plan with it. Just happens to be the perfect size to fit on top of this thing. So this has kind of been my plan all along. Put a piece of glass on top and make it a little bit more useful than just a display piece. So now we have, like I said, the little cubby down there and we have the piece of glass. So it's going to be, you know, a cool mobile um, coffee table, so to speak. All right, so I figure you guys had enough of me making the crate. So I'm just kind of fast forwarding a little bit. I've got these runners made that I'm going to start building the glass top pads for. And now all of a sudden, I don't know about you guys, you won't be able to unsee it, but I got some Starship Enterprise vibes off of this thing. Yeah, I don't know. I might just have to keep it like that. Put, you know, Enterprise on the side. Maybe like a circle up here or something like that. I don't know, might, have, might just have to go with it. So the, the tubing here, it's centered with the crate itself. And uh, everything, I kind of leveled the bench out and leveled these to each other and then the feet for the glass, I'm going to have those uh, leveling, so we'll, we'll be able to dial this thing in, but it's going to be pretty close right off the rim. Alright, well you guys saw me put uh, just these little corners on here. I went ahead and added just these adjustable, um, well they're kind of, they're furniture feet used in the opposite direction, they're holding glass, put some felt pads on there. It should fit really well. It'd be pretty, you know, be pretty stable. You can kind of see the size there. The radiator is going to basically be flush with the front of the glass here. It's, nothing's going to really overhang and that's about perfect for a table. You know, you've got to put quite a bit of force on here to lift, to like flip the glass. It should be relatively stable in the end. Use your brain whenever you're uh, setting stuff on here and don't lean on it, so it should be good to go. But overall, I really like how this thing is looking. It's very presentable, but why not have it roll around and be functional as something that holds something else? All right, so the table, the display, the engine, all that stuff, super cool. How can we take it to the next level? It has to run. We, we just, we have to know. And if I'm going to make it run, you know, I can do it very simply. These electronics are very simple. I can show you guys how. So here is what I've been thinking. Now, you pull the glass off. Let's say you want to run this. I'm going to grab the camera. I'm going to flip the mic around, and I'll walk you guys through what my plan is. All right, now we have just the frame here. And I did this kind of spaced out like this for another reason, in that I can make basically like an electronics tray to package every, almost everything I need like the coils, so coils that would leave a short plug lead to either cylinder, have one flipped around the other way. And then on top of that, of course, we got a throttle housing. I could put this basically anywhere. You know, we'll have very, very minimal wiring. I can mount this thing up top. You'll have your functioning kill switch, which would actually operate the bike along with your actual start button. This is the factory style control for this engine, which is an another feature. But I could mount that on just a 7 8 inch bar. You'll make it removable. So you'd have that there. Have your coils all mounted to this frame. And then down here, what my thoughts are, open this up, put our battery in here. And then I've got another CX ignition switch just because, uh, you know, why wouldn't you want a Honda key to start this thing? So open the tray. I'll make like a little box here. Flick it, I'll have my starter solenoid along with the battery hidden back there and maybe the spark units, and we'll be good to go. So, because 
this isn't going to be powering anything but the ignition and you're not going to run it for more than a few minutes, we're not going to need a charging system. So I can forego my AC output here and basically all we need to run is our single plug here coming from the pickup coil and that's going to run into to, uh, the, uh, the spark units and then from there it just gets outputted to the coils themselves and then there's just one power wire and one ground. It's, it's that simple guys. So I think this is just too cool not to do. I think I'd regret if we didn't do it. So I'm going to get to building. All right, so we're back up top here and it is time to start working on the ignition side. So here are the two wires that come up from the box. We have our switch 12 volt power and this is going to run to the black wire going to the control here, easy enough. And then that is outputted through yellow with red. Whenever you hit the start button that goes down to the solenoid so that connects this factory. And then all we're left with is our output for the ignition that's run off the kill switch. This is just a black with white wire. And everything on the ignition side, from your, uh, your spark units to your coils, everything has a black with white wire. So our harness for that is down here, it's kind of tucked away, and that plugs in with this four prong right here. And it's marked, it has two blue, two yellow, and then they have white stripes. And it's very critical, you don't mess with that, like you keep that in the exact orientation. And then the spark units, they don't care which side is which, so you just plug these things back in. 
So I'm gonna keep those like that. And then this probably has just enough length to uh, not even have to mess with it. And then from there, all we have to really do is just shorten this section of harness, which runs to the coils, because our coils are right here. And then we just have a power, which runs to this, and that ties into everything, and then we have a ground. It is that easy. So what I'm going to do, take this back on the bench, just work on cleaning it up, kind of making it look new again, and uh, kind of get a plan together on how I want to loom it and start cutting it up. All right, well, let's go ahead and install this harness. We'll terminate this last wire and we'll be good to go. All right, so here on the bench, we have some carburetors. I did end up sourcing a set of GL500 uh, carbs. I found oh, the next state over. They were a fair deal and they're a little dusty, but he showed me pictures of uh, like the insides without the bowls on and they're gonna take very minimal cleaning. So that combined with the fact that I don't have to spend the labor of narrowing, that, narrowing the other carbs and stuff like that, this is just gonna be easier. It's gonna save me time. So we'll get these things cleaned up. I have the ultrasonic cleaner heating up. We'll run them through there and kind of see how they look after one one little session. And then if we have to, we'll go we'll go a little further with them. But they will uh, it'll be our last piece of the puzzle for making this thing run. All right, we get these carbs on here, and they are gonna stay on here. spark. Great spark there. Awesome, man. I knew it'd run, but like, it's still cool. I do need to put a different bowl um, O-ring on that bowl there. It seems like it's a little lean on the left side. You can see kind of the, the blue flame. 
but also I could benefit from sinking the carbs and stuff like that, so just the normal stuff. But, she runs! She seems to run fine. It runs.
having a lot of fun with this thing, let me tell you. Well, how about that? I think this thing is so cool. In fact, I don't think it gets much cooler than this. Uh, first, we start off with a new old stock, never been out of the crate GL500 engine. Uh, where do you find one of those? I don't know. And then I've repurposed it into a cool display using the original crate. We have a lot of just cool factor going on with it. And then I made it into a coffee table, which is cool because now it's functional. And then I made it run. Guys, come on. How cool is that? I've never seen anything like this, and uh, I don't know if you guys have either, but, you know, this is cool, and I'm super happy this is going to go to uh, to my friend John, and it will make a lot of people smile. So, I might be able to do a follow-up video uh, in the future with it on where it's at, but uh, he's actually bringing me another engine to make a display from, not one that'll run, but it'll be a Triumph Rocket 3 motor, which, <laughs> that's going to be cool too. So... I'd really appreciate it if you uh, gave this video a thumbs up and share it around if you would. That would be really cool. Help get this video out in front of your gearhead friends and family. I think they'd really enjoy it. It's something that I think uh, would make a lot of people smile. So anyway, uh, I know this video is running long. and There's a good reason for that. I cut probably an hour out of this thing. So if there's enough of a demand, I can do a re-edit and do a full extended version. And I'll go into more detail on how I did every single aspect of this thing and the thinking behind it. So just let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. But that's going to do it for now. I hope you guys like this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.